Meet Dr. Frank Plummer, renowned HIV researcher and the former head of the National Microbiology Lab of Canada. We asked him about his start as a researcher, how he became an expert on AIDS, and when he took over the lab. This goes way back to uh, uh, 1984, basically, when uh, I went to Kenya as a uh, University of Manitoba faculty member to kind of build our research project there. And we were interested in sexually transmitted diseases. And my contribution was to try to study uh, immunity to diseases like gonorrhea. Uh, and uh, I thought the best way to do that was to study people who were frequently exposed to, to gonorrhea and got it frequently. Um, and that was uh, female sex workers. When we got around to testing these uh, women for HIV, we found that two-thirds of them were infected with the virus, which was a complete shock. Uh, we had no knowledge that there was any AIDS in Kenya at all. Uh, and that really reoriented uh, what we were doing. So the project uh, rapidly evolved into an HIV research project uh, rather than um, a, a research project on gonorrhea, although we continued to do that work. And that's kind of how I got into uh, HIV. Uh, we, you know, our project happened to be in the right place at the right time, and I often sort of say that AIDS kind of fell on me. So when I took over the National Microbiology Lab, my um, goal was to help uh, further the vision that the, uh, the people that uh, built it had of being you know, the best in the world and uh, attracting the best in the world. So uh, I think the expectations are always set very high. It's not only me that set them, but the people that built the lab that set them high. And uh, there's... Uh, an environment, I think, partly that I helped create, but partly because the lab was the best in the world, that people came there with the idea that they're working the best facility in the world. And the morale is extremely high because of that and because of the environment. We have received a lot of support from Government of Canada through the Canada Foundation for Innovation and the um, Canadian Institutes of Health Research and other organizations. And uh, we were fortunate enough to get uh, one of the uh, uh, Gates Grand Challenge projects uh, a number of years ago, which uh, allowed us to do a lot of work. And uh, I'd like to tell a story about building of uh, the bioinformatics capacity. Um, I didn't really even know what bioinformatics was. I still don't know not much about it, but uh, I knew that there was a need for bioinformatic expertise at the lab. So I hired a young um, bioinformatician uh, from the University of Alberta. And uh, I was happy with uh, him coming on board and, uh, you know, tried to support him and uh, kind of saw him in the hallways every once in a while and said, hi, Gary, how's it going, and that kind of thing. Uh, but didn't really follow his work that closely. And then uh, a couple of years later, he was giving a presentation at uh, the annual SAC uh, Public Health Agency of Canada um, uh, science meeting. And he put up these slides of this supercomputer that he built in the basement, essentially. And uh, he was at a point where the US CDC was sending him um, genomic information to analyze because they didn't have the capability of analyzing it. Uh, so I guess uh, what I tried to do as director of the lab is basically set people free to do their jobs. And uh, uh, I tried to run interference for them and uh, get them the money that they needed to, to do their jobs well. And it worked.